Hello, my name is Marco Hermann. In this video, I want to give you an outline of my work entitled Use of Ancillary Data for Partial Area Specific Prognosis of Stem Based Diseases in Wheat. First, I want to talk about the background of the work. The Central Institute for Decision Support Systems and Crop Protection, in German abbreviated ZEP, has developed more than 40 prognosis models for practical use in agriculture and horticulture. The prognosis is calculated for specific regions or fields as a whole. The work presented here is part of the research project Assistance System for Site-Specific Application of Pesticides. The aim of this project is to develop a system environment for planning, execution and evaluation of site-specific pesticide applications. Site-specific tools for disease detection or partial area-specific tools for disease prognosis are not ready to use yet. Therefore, our aim in this project was to evolve a partial area-specific prognosis model exemplarily for stem-based diseases in wheat. As stated earlier, this is how prognosis models developed by the ZEP schematically work right now. The prognosis is made for an entire field at most, so the output of a prognosis model for a field is binary. Either a pesticide treatment is necessary or not. These models are mostly based on meteorological and agronomic data like temperature, precipitation, relative humidity, previous crop or tillage. The motivation for this work was to add a further step in disease prognosis, in which partial areas with lower disease risk could be excluded from treatments or treated with a lower dose. For this kind of prognosis, other data sources are necessary, since the previously mentioned economic and meteorological factors don't vary much in the field or don't vary at all. Therefore, Ancillary data sources like satellite data or official geodata need to be used. From those sources, the spatial distribution of factors like soil moisture or crop density can be approximated. By using these sources, it is possible to differentiate zones of relatively high or low disease intensity. These zones give an indication of the relative disease distribution in a field. To estimate the actual or absolute disease intensity, Either a sample has to be drawn or it has to be predicted by a, in quotation marks, traditional prognosis model. The workflow for model development mainly consists of four steps, which is shown here. The model is based on georeferenced disease measurements, which were sampled over several years on winter wheat fields in Germany. At milk ripening, disease measurements were executed to evaluate the spatial distribution of the following stem-based diseases. Eye spot, sharp eye spot, and Fusarium crown rot. In this video presentation, only results considering Fusarium crown rot are shown, since it was the most prevalent disease surveyed. On each sample field, Disease measurements were carried out at about 150 points by sampling 20 tillers per point. In 2018, only 10 tillers per point were sampled. The points were aligned as a grid. Disease severity was estimated by visually examining the tillers and calculating a disease index, the so-called Bockmann value. In total, 16 sample grids were installed between 2018 and 2020, consisting of 2,741 points. Additionally, data was included from the previous project, resulting in a total of 35 grids and 6,415 points. For each of these fields, the resulting spatial disease distribution was tested for presence or absence of positive spatial autocorrelation. In short, positive spatial autocorrelation indicates a patchy spatial disease distribution, because neighboring measurement points 
are more likely to share similar disease severity values and points further apart. An example can be seen in this detail of the previous figure, where areas of similar disease severity can be easily distinguished. Testing for positive spatial autocorrelation is important because a patchy disease distribution is a requirement for partial area specific disease prognosis. If the examined disease is distributed randomly in space, no meaningful disease prognosis can be calculated. For model development, the presence of positive spatial autocorrelation was tested using the Morris I test statistic. Grids that did not exhibit positive spatial autocorrelation were excluded from further analysis. In total, 28 grids remained. Based on these 28 grids, potential data sources for partial area specific disease prognosis were evaluated geostatistically. Available data sources comprised sensor data, remote sensing data, and official geodata. Since sensor and remote sensing data were only available for a part of the grids, most of the work was invested into evaluation of official view data as a potential input data source. Therefore, the results shown are based on these official view data. The evaluation of the potential data sources was based on a semi-quantitative analysis to identify specific subzones per grid, zones of relatively high and low disease severity. For these zones, the respective input data characteristic per zone was derived and analyzed by comparing all available grids to detect global patterns. This was achieved by using a hotspot analysis combined with a Voronoi tessellation to identify subzones. The derived data were graphically displayed as a scatter plot and analyzed. Due to this analysis, elevation data and the topographic wetness index, a static measure of soil moisture derived from digital elevation models, were identified as suitable input data for partial area specific prognosis. Based on these input data sources, and a spatial relationship between disease severity and the respective input data, a model for partial area specific disease prognosis was developed. The schematic process steps of the model are outlined here. The input data, in this case the calculated topographic wetness index, is used to delineate four different zones. The resulting zones were termed disease risk zones. Since the model does not give an indication of the absolute disease level, but zones more or less susceptible to disease infestation. The zone delineation is accomplished using a fuzzy C means clustering algorithm, which is commonly used in precision farming. Since this algorithm doesn't incorporate the spatial information of the input data, isolated pixels may appear as can be seen in the top right of the figure. To improve the contiguity of the delineated zones, the initial delineation results are spatially smoothed. A spatial median filter was used to smooth the delineated zones. In a further step of processing, the two zones that are most and least susceptible to disease infestation are identified. This is done by using prior knowledge about the relationship between the input data and disease severity. The two remaining zones are aggregated to one zone of intermediate disease risk. If any of the three zones falls below an area threshold, zone delineation is repeated using three initial zones. Finally, the performance of the zone delineation was evaluated utilizing the disease measurements that were carried out. Here, the evaluation results of the partial area-specific disease prognosis 
using the topographic wetness index as an input data source are presented. As mentioned, three zones of different disease risk were delineated for each of the 28 investigated sampling grids. Then, the frequency of coincidences between the measured and predicted disease levels was evaluated, meaning the probability that a delineated zone of, for example, low predicted disease risk would actually show the lowest mean disease severity of the three zones. The results show that, based on the zone of interest, in 54 to 68% of the cases predicted and measured disease level coincided. This is roughly about twice as much as what would be expected by chance, which is, based on three possible outcomes, 33%. Looking at the delineation results based on elevation data, the precision of the model is even a bit higher, spanning from 61 to 79 percent for the intermediate disease risk zone. In summary, the development of a partial area-specific prognosis model was presented, a model to predict the relative disease distribution of Fusarium crownrod. As input data, the topographic wetness index and elevation data were utilized. These show to be the most suitable input data based on the geostatistical evaluation conducted, considering official geodata as the data source. The model precision arise based upon the chosen input data and disease risk zone. It lies roughly in a range of 60 to 70 percent, which is about twice as much as what would be expected by chance. This is not sufficient for practical use in agriculture, though. To improve model precision, the implementation of additional data sources or substitution of the existing data sources is necessary. Especially satellite data seem suitable for this purpose and have already been tested. Algorithms for data filtering and pre-processing are necessary to be able to implement them into the existing model. This work was funded by means of the German Federal Ministry of Food and Agriculture. Thank you for your attention.